Welcome to the first ever Simply Joyful Podcast Video Edition. I am so excited to finally bring the podcast to life here on video. Now don't worry, Simply Joyful Podcast is still going strong, but I wanted to also be able to bring you some videos of some of the interviews that I get to do. And today we are kicking off this video edition with none other than John Irwin, the co-director of the new film, I Can Only Imagine. It was such a thrill getting to interview John today and also getting to interview Priscilla Schreier. I know many of you are familiar with her. She's actually on the podcast today. So make sure you head over to simplyjoyfulpodcast.com to catch the episode with Priscilla and then you know keep watching this so you can see my interview with John. You are gonna get so excited to see and hear a little behind the story of behind the story of the song from Mercy Me, I Can Only Imagine. This film is going to go crazy, and I have been so just blessed to get to interview one of the stars, Priscilla Schreier, and now John, one of the co-directors. Now, you're probably familiar with some of the Irwin Brother movies, and that is Woodlawn, October Baby, and Mom's Night Out. I love Mom's Night Out, and we talk about that a little bit <laughs> as well. I'm so excited for you to see this interview and to get to know more about this movie. But you know what? As soon as you watch this, you have to run out and go watch the movie because you're going to love it. I cannot wait. We are taking our family tonight, and we're going to get you know babysitter for the little people, like the little, little people. People, but I'm bringing my nine-year-old and up. So I can't wait. Let's definitely show some support for good Christian filmmaking and go out and buy our tickets. Be sure to stay tuned to the very end and I'll have a little wrap-up session after my interview with John, but I hope that you enjoyed this interview with John Irwin. Well, welcome, John, and welcome to the Simply Joyful Video Edition. I am so thrilled to have you here. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here, and uh, it's a great, great kind of moment for us. It's been a two-year journey to bring I Can Only Imagine to the screen, and, and, and now it's finally here, and, and uh, I think we're going to have a spectacular uh, weekend and a great experience uh, opening this film nationwide. Ah, oh, I am so excited to see the whole film. I've gotten to see little bits and pieces of things, but not the whole thing yet. So before we kind of jump into some of the questions, can we start by maybe you just introducing yourself to the audience yeah. and telling us a yeah, little bit about I'm, you too? Uh, I'm John Irwin uh, from Birmingham, Alabama, uh, born and raised. Um, and uh, at the age of 15, I began working for ESPN as a cameraman because someone got sick and I got to take their place. And so I was... <laughs> From the, from the, uh, and I, I may have neglected to inform ESPN of, of my age, but, but, uh, you know, I was just a kid that joined the circus. I, I, and I'm not recommending that to any of your subscribers or listeners. It just happened. Uh, but, but I, I, uh, I fell in love. I mean, I fell in love, uh, you know, early with, with the film industry and with film and television. And I was kind of a, you know, a kid from the Bible belt, you know, and, and, uh, I went from, really not knowing anyone who didn't share my convictions as a Christian to being the only Christian, you know, with this group of pirates at, at ESPN. And, and, but that's when my faith became even more real because it had to be mine. And, and, um, and, and I just, my brother and I started working uh, uh, in film and television and my, my dad bought us a camera when I was 16 and, and told us to dream bold, dream big, dream the impossible. And we took him up on that offer and, and did many, many, many different types of videos, a lot of weddings and all kinds of things, surgeries, birthday parties, no. emotional videos, church videos. But one thing led to another and, and the videos got better and the videos got bigger. And then uh, the Christian artist, Michael W. Smith, uh, followed quickly by Amy Grant, uh, gave us a break to do music videos for them. And, and that led to a career in Nashville, uh, doing uh, a lot of music videos and, and doing very well uh, with them. Um, we won video of the year three years in a row and, and just had a great wow. kind of gig, you know, and, and yet, uh, uh, it was when I went down to Albany, Georgia to a movie called courageous, a Christian film, the real Cinderella story A church makes uh, movies down there, uh, uh, Sherwood Baptist. And, uh, but they, they, at the time it was even more so they did it primarily with church volunteers and wow. uh, they would do some action sequences involving cars because it was a police drama. 
Mm-hmm. And you never want to mix those two. Uh, church, church, church people. <laughs> people could die, you know. And so, uh, and so it was up to us uh, to, you know, I came in to direct second unit and, uh, and basically um, uh, I was, you know, uh, to, to take the vision of Alex uh, and, and go execute it, you know, in a safe control environment. I love stunt work and those things. And Alex asked me on the set of that film, he said, John, what's your purpose and the purpose of your work? And, uh, you know, I couldn't answer the question. Uh, and not only could I not answer it, I couldn't stop thinking about it. Uh, and that was my career to calling moment where I realized that Andy and I had been given a gift and, uh, and not only a gift of talent, but also a gift to be able to hone and refine our craft for a long period of time. And it was time that we used that gift. And, uh, for a purpose beyond ourselves and for God's glory instead of our own. I think as a side, uh, you know, when you find your unique ability, you know, there's, there's a lot of things we can do, but I think there's only a few things that we're born to do. And when you find that thing and then you use it for God's glory instead of your own and for a purpose beyond yourself professionally, you'll never be happier. Uh, your work becomes a great adventure. Uh, really. And, and that happened for us. And so that led to the movie um, October Baby, our first film, and then Mom's Night Out, Woodlawn, and now I can only imagine. Oh, well, I, my family, all my, the boys, and my, I mean, I enjoyed Woodlawn, but I loved Mom's Night Out. That one, well, I think every few course. seconds, I'm like, this is my life. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I literally followed my wife around for six months with a pen and paper, just, you know, <laughs> notating everything and uh you know i made that film and i told someone i think I, I had the privilege of making the world's most expensive hallmark card for my wife and everyone like her uh including yourself and the film was very successful and and uh and and uh you know it's amazing to see people getting to enjoy these films and and creating a film that's enter- entertaining first and foremost that's why we go to the movies yeah. that's emotionally that's emotionally relatable hopefully no matter what you believe um and we say we, you don't have to be for our movies. The goal is you don't have to be a Christian to go into the movie, but hopefully you really want to be one coming out, you know, and, and, uh, and then just that films that showcase uh, our values and things that uplift and inspire us. Um, and, and, and the truth that, uh, that I believe comes from Christianity, which by the way, when it's correctly presented is just universally appealing. And uh, so I can only imagine, you know, it's a story of forgiveness and the power of forgiveness and the power of redemption. Uh, between a father and son that inspired, you know, the best-selling, most played Christian song of all time. So those are the type of stories that we look for. Oh, that is so neat. Now, how did you first, like, meet Bart? Because this is all, so so everybody is following us. I can only imagine is based on the hit song from Mercy Me that was written by Bart Millard. Now, how how did you meet Bart? Because I I heard there's a fun little story on how you kind of got to know his story. there's... Well, first of all, we worked in uh, film and television for many years, you know, and I'm, and then and then I made that transition to music videos, and then music wow. videos for, oh gosh, almost a decade. That was our primary bread and butter, and so we worked with just about everybody, but we never actually directed a video for for Mercy Me, but we we knew them well, and my brother and and Bart really struck up a friendship. And Bart was coming to a screening actually of Mom's Night Out, and uh, and he was watching the film and really loved it. And, uh, and he told Andy, he said, hey, would you ever take a look at my story? There's a studio developing the, the I Can Only Imagine origin story. And, uh, and Andy said, you know, what's interesting is they sent us the script this morning. And so, yes, of course, I'd love to look at it. And so we looked at it and then did a bunch of interviews with Bard. And just, um, of course, I love that song. I mean, that song was really an anchor of hope for me and in a difficult season of life when we were losing an extended family member to cancer. And I probably used to imagine... Uh, 200 times, you know, uh, you know, and just would close my eyes and dream about a world without pain and suffering. And it, it was therapeutic for me in that sense. And, and not to me only, to millions and millions of people. Oh, yeah. But I had no idea that the story behind the song was as strong as it was. And, and uh, I remember so vividly when Bart said, I know God is real because of the change I saw in my dad. He said, I watched a monster transform into my best friend and the man I wanted to become. And there's no other explanation for it. Just that beautiful, powerful story of the redemption between a father and a son was so relatable uh, that I said, we, we got to figure out how to make this movie uh, and get it to the screen. 
Oh, I love it. Now, you've kind of hinted about the storyline, but can you tell us a little bit more about the film without giving anything away? Because we want everybody to yeah, go and yeah, get to experience I mean, really, it. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's it's a redemption story. Uh, it's it's a story of, and it's interesting when Dennis Quaid, who's amazing, by the way, yes. uh, uh, signed on, he said, uh, you know, I've never played redemption on film. like I've never played transformation on film like this before. Yeah. And his first film was in 1976, uh, and he was an extra, and Cloris Leachman was the star. They haven't been back together uh, since this film. But, but so he's done many, many, many films, over 70 films, but he's just, he said he never played uh, a character that, that went from A to B like this before, that changed this dramatically over the course of the story. And the story is that Bart was from Texas, and, and uh, his, his mom left at, at an early age because she just really couldn't handle Bart's father, and she left him with with her father, uh, with his father, and and um, he just had a rage problem, you know, and and and, uh, and he took it out on Bart, and it was a horrible uh, relationship, and uh, and in high school, Bart was trying to please his dad the only way he knew how by playing football because his dad was an ex star, and uh, in a freak accident, uh, he he uh, broke both ankles in one play in, in practice, and the only elective left so that he could still graduate was the glee club so you got this big football player uh in the glee club and uh it was his music teacher played by priscilla shire who you interviewed uh that was the first to recognize his talent and realize this big guy has a big voice and uh and he found out his passion that he had never shared with anybody he had always loved music always loved christian music always escaped to it uh and he found his voice and but that put him at further odds with his dad because his dad was always like don't dream just get a job you know and uh your dreams will just let you down and he be he begins to explore his talent and and pursue his passion for music and that takes him on a journey um but you know it's not until he comes face to face with the choice to forgive his dad that he can, that he that he uh can find the song that he was born to sing you know and, and uh he had to reconcile with his father uh first to, to find the song that he was meant to share with the world. Oh, I love it. Well, and you really do have this all-star cast. I mean, you've got a oh, yeah. lot of amazing people. And I love that you even, you have, this story also involves famous people being played by actors because you have Amy Grant in there and some other yeah. people. So, I mean, it's, I was I was blown away when I because I got I got the press release so I got to see all of these extra little. Videos. Oh, you're gonna love the movie! I, I I would I can't wait for you to see the film. It really is. Um, it won't let you down. It's a spectacular. You will cry. You'll laugh and you'll cry some more and then you'll laugh some more and hopefully you'll cheer. But it just uh, it leaves you with this sense of joy, um, and uh, and fulfillment and redemption. It's just spectacular to I. Of everything we've ever done, I've never enjoyed watching a film with an audience like this. I've screened it hundreds of times all over America for almost nine months, and it's just spectacular. And it really is Andy and I just stepping back and letting the story and the cast shine. The performances are so great in this movie, and that really began with finding John Michael. Uh, you know, we, the big question was who's gonna play Bart? Because we're like, this kid has to sing. I was actually working in New York. We had looked at almost a thousand people all over the nation, hadn't really found anybody. And I was in New York working and uh, I went to see Les Mez on Broadway. I love that play. And it was the understudy to Jean Valjean, uh, John Michael, who, uh, but he played Valjean. You know, normally an understudy would only play the role four or five times when the lead got sick. Yeah. Uh, but that vocal is so difficult, the main lead could really only do the weekend performances. So J. Michael played Valjean 65 times during that Broadway run. And, uh, and hearing him sing these songs, like bringing him home, it was unbelievable. And come to find out, he had literally the best, ver the best voice I've ever heard. And, uh, and uh, he had just uh, submitted an online audition. Uh, and his dad's a pastor from Missouri. And he saw Mercy Me play three times in high school at youth camps and things no. of nature. So talk about a needle in a haystack. And then it was just about surrounding him with an ensemble. And, and that started with Dennis Quaid, which was like having Michael Jordan on your team. Everybody just got better. And, uh, and, he, and he, I'm telling you, Quaid delivers a performance. You've never seen Quaid like this. And there's this humble authenticity and broken quality. It's totally unique in his body of work. And it's so good. 
And then to bring back on Trace Adkins, who we work with in Mom's Night Out, he's such a great friend and a wonderful actor and has got that amazing voice. And then Priscilla Shire in her first film since War Room and Madeline Carroll, the most on-fire Christian in Hollywood I've ever met. Uh, she was first discovered as Kevin Costner's daughter in the movie Swing Vote. And, uh, That's where it was. I was like, where have I seen her? Christian. It's just an amazing group of people. And, uh, and then I say Cloris Leachman. The uh, first time Quaid had been back with her since 1976. So it's an, an amazing cast and an amazing group of people. And the performances in this film are just outstanding. Oh, yeah. I mean, I cannot wait. So the big question is, where can people see the movie? Because it releases well, today. We are, we are opening nationwide tonight. It's a large release. So it's uh, thank you to our partners at Lionsgate and Roadside Attractions for releasing the film on uh, nearly 1,700 screens all over the United States. And I'm, I'm so um, thrilled for this moment. Uh, there's been so many miracles that have made this movie happen. And one of those is the release date. Uh, I was talking to another Christian filmmaker uh, months ago, and he said, when are, you, when are you opening the movie? And I said, well, we were thinking about early March, but the Academy Awards were late this year. So we thought, well, when does the band's tour end? And it was March the 11th. And so we thought, well, we'll release uh, on Friday. Uh, March the 16th. He's like, dude, your release date is 316. How cool is that? I'm like, oh, yeah, of course we planned it that way. It's like, uh, <laughs> on and my movie comes out on 316. So yeah, that makes total sense. And uh, and so it's a special moment and a special day. And, and uh, I'm just, I'm so honored to finally be here and, and uh, help us go see this movie this weekend, create something called Fear of Missing Out. FOMO is what they call That's it. That's right. This path. <laughs> It's the clearest path back to a generation. Let's make some noise together wow. and uh, and let's cause a stir and let's get some people into the theater that, that need to get into the theater. This is America's second largest export, mass entertainment. And it's a way to get to a generation that we're losing by telling stories, which, by the way, is exactly what Jesus did. And so I think uh, we've only begun to see what Christian films could become. And. The future is very bright. So it's going to be a special moment. And uh, it's already special. We've been the number one ticket on Fandango this morning and yesterday morning. We're in the top three on both Fandango and MovieTickets.com right now, behind only Black Panther and Wrinkle in Time, which is unbelievable. Yeah. So, uh, I think this could be a great, a great weekend. Oh, I'm so excited. Well, I can't wait to go see it. I'm taking the family. Going to get babysitters Thank for the little you. people because I don't think the little, my six and four, I don't know if they can handle some of the intensity. That's a good question, actually. You know, we wanted to, to tell the story because obviously this deals with someone vacuuming in my hallway. I'm in a hotel uh, in Dallas, <laughs> Texas, opening the film. It's just the way these things work, right? At any rate, um, uh, you know, we wanted to make trust is a very important word to Andy and I. And uh, I have four kids. My wife is a rock star. They're uh, nine, seven, four, and one. And, uh, you know, I don't like being betrayed by entertainment when I, I go on daddy dates with my kids to the movies. Yeah. And, and uh, if it has our name on it, you can trust it. So it was very important to deal with these issues that are very real and very raw in a, yeah. in a, in a PG way and in a way that's accessible and unifying to the entire family. And, and uh, that's what we've done. And, and I think the film is more powerful for it. I think like in Jaws, the shark is more, it's scarier when you don't see it. So some of the, you know, some of the uh, things that, that uh, the, the, the trauma really between Bart and his dad is, is implied, it's in dialogue, and it's a film that you can see with your entire family. So I took my, uh, my nine and seven year old uh, okay. to see it and they really enjoyed it. I, I think anything below that, they might get a little antsy. It's not a cartoon, but, uh, but, but uh, I, I think uh, it's a film for the entire family. Oh, well, I can't wait. Well, thank you so much for coming on thank and you. sharing about it. This is, this great. is so Appreciate fun. it. Uh, thank you for having me on. What an honor to get to interview John Irwin, one of the directors that I have so much respect for. Both he and his brother have produced some amazing films. I hope you'll check those out too. But please go run out and watch I Can Only Imagine with your family. And who knew that such an amazing story was behind this film? I think when this song came out, we were all familiar with the fact that it was about his father who had passed away, but you don't know the full story until you see this movie. So I really hope you guys will go out and show some support. The Kendrick brothers and the Irwin brothers have put together some incredible films, and it's been so exciting to see just how excellent Christian filmmaking has become. So I really hope we can be supporting them by actually going out and when the DVDs come out, buying them and then going out to the theaters and getting there and getting our tickets and showing our support that way as well. 
So let's get excited, let's share this movie. So be sure that you check out my interview with Priscilla over on the podcast. I put a link above, but you can also head over to simplyjoyfulpodcast.com to see all the different interviews I've had over there. But do make sure that you are subscribing here on YouTube so you don't miss my future guests I have coming on the video edition of the podcast. I cannot wait for you guys to see all of the different guests that we have lined up for here on YouTube and go check out, I mean, we have over 50 guests. Priscilla was actually number 53 for the podcast, but having a ton of amazing people on to encourage you. And that's really the heart of everything I do is to truly encourage you and inspire you to find simple solutions for a more joy-filled life. So I am so thrilled that you took time to watch this video. Again, make sure you're subscribing here to my YouTube channel. Also, if you are a mom watching this, do be sure that you get a free copy of my book, Sandy Savers for Moms. You can get that by going to christyclover.com slash join. I hope you enjoyed this interview. Be sure to stay tuned for more. Take care and have a very blessed rest of your day. And don't forget to live simply and be joyful.